Now let's talk a little bit about the SKU and choosing a distribution style. I'll go back to that slide. So, um, in, so Redshift is a columnar database and it does a really, really good job of um, scanning really, really long tables and distributing your data across multiple nodes so that you can scale horizontally really easily. And you have to select upfront when you're determining a table, the kind of distribution style that you want to use for that table. Now, there's three types. The default is even. Basically, rows for one table are distributed evenly across all the nodes in a particular cluster. And this is done in a round robin fashion. So you'll see that the, the disk utilization will be the same. The number of rows will be the same across all nodes. Now, you might not want that when you're joining one particular table on a particular column often. When you do that, when you're joining two, two tables on the same column, Redshift needs to sort of move all that data into the same node so that it can process it in the, in the, in the subsequent step, which ends up creating a lot of network traffic and IO traffic on your cluster. So they solve that, so Redshift solves that by allowing you to select a key-based distribution style where you'll define one, one column as a, as a, um, as, as the key, and then what Redshift will do is it will make sure that the same value that that you know um, uh, rows across those two tables with the same with the same value in that particular column will be co-located on the same node. That means that when you're joining, you don't have to take you know pay the price of low of uh, moving data around. Now, the downside of that is that you end up having row skew. So row skew is occurs when you're using a key-based distribution style and the uh, normalization of data on your distribution key is not it, it is not random. So if you basically have a key of zip code and all your customers are in one city, you're going to have um, the, the one node that has a lot more data for that table than another, which is a problem when you're just doing a scan on that table because your scan is only as fast as the slowest node that it's selecting from. And so you end up with a situation where your scans are slower and your disk utilization is uneven. So in general, you only want to use distribution keys if you are sure that you're going to see the benefits on some large queries that are joining on those tables. If not, just use all or even distribution. That way you can minimize uh, impact on scans and uh, disk utilization. So, to summarize schema design, some, some best practices, um, uh, use sort keys. It's a really, really good idea when you're filtering from a certain column often so that Redshift will ensure that the data is sorted in a way where it can look it up more quickly. Speed up complex joins by using distribution keys. One thing to remember is there isn't, uh, a, you know, you can have compound sort keys in Redshift, so you can define more than one sort key. And you can also, um, if you have a lot of sort, if you have a table with a lot of columns and then you have a lot of queries that are sorting and filtering on different columns, you can use an interleaf style. And that's really cool because it sort of guarantees good performance for any, for filtering on any of the columns in your interleaf sort key list. But the downside of using interleaf is that vacuuming is very expensive. You need to use a special vacuum command to vacuum those things. And so um, keep that in mind. That's a trade-off. That vacuum re-indexing an interleaf table is much more expensive than just doing a basic vacuum sort. Um, we talked about row skew in the previous slide. So you want to eliminate row skew as much as possible, unless there's a good benefit, right, that we talked about on joining. And then spectrum. Spectrum is something that came out uh, last year. Really highly recommend using Spectrum when you're touching tables that um, infrequently. And what it allows you to do is make a, a set of data in S3 look like a Redshift relation table so that you can just access it just like any other table in Redshift, but you don't have to copy the data in. So really highly recommend using that for, um, for uh, tables that are not accessed frequently.